we are the lived experience, right? We are the experts of what's going on. And so who better than to tell like city hall or politicians what solutions work for us, right? These are the solutions that work for us because we live in here, we know what's up. You know, oftentimes people are going to academia, but like academia helps, but like, how about my story? You know, my story definitely is important and yeah. it's impactful, so. I'm here in Newark off the Passaic River in the Ironbound, an area often referred to as a sacrifice zone, as a site of toxic waste from industry in the region. How could you engage your community to work with them to ensure a brighter future, a future with clean air, clean water, healthy food, and all the things that our communities need and deserve? Today I'm talking with Christian Rodriguez, pronouns they, them, who's a community farm manager and organizer at the Ironbound Community Corporation and is working with the community to move a just transition forward. Who are you? My name is Christian Rodriguez. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. I am a community organizer, a farmer. I'm a partner to an amazing person. I'm like the community auntie, <laughs> so to speak. I grew up like literally down the street from here um, in the housing projects, low income housing projects called uh, Hyatt Court. With my elderly mom, she had me late in age. <laughs> so, and I have three older brothers. There was a lot of like community, a lot of love. Like everyone knew each other, right? We all knew each other. We all grew up with each other. To now, like the kids that come to the farm are the kids of my friends that wow. I grew up with. And so it's like that love and respect for them because I'm like, I see the struggles that we all went through and the struggles that are still happening and how we can actually make a difference by informing them. Growing up here in the neighborhood, we. We had a swimming pool down the street, which was called uh, Hayes Pool, and like uh -huh. we all grew up there. And then all of a sudden, it closed down. And it wasn't until now, like doing this work now, that I realized the reason it closed down was because we were swimming in contaminated waters. Ooh. Growing up, we didn't know any of this, right? We didn't know that Hayes Pools was contaminated. We didn't know that Agent Orange was being developed in one of the facilities down the street from where we live. That Passaic River, that is the longest contaminated site on the East Coast, right? It's like 13 miles of like contamination. These things we didn't know growing up, like who, like how, who we asked, right? Who was available to ask? So now I make it my vision and my like, y'all need to know, you know, y'all need to know as kids, you know, growing up so that when you go into your field of studies or your careers, you know, Okay, I grew up in this neighborhood and it was this, that, and a third in our neighborhood, but I can do this type of work to help make the change, you know? Hoping that that happens, you know, that I'm planting those seeds um, in, our, in our kids' minds. What did you want to be when you were growing up? I loved technology at the time because I didn't, couldn't afford a computer, right? Yeah. And so I moved away after high school. I moved away and I went to, to college and I lived in Florida for mm. a while. And I came back in 2016, came back to Jersey because my mom is elderly yeah. and she needed help. And so I moved back and I saw how hazy the community was and like, why does it stink? Like things that I didn't realize as a kid, I moved away, came back and I realized, oh my God, it smells out here. The skies are a lot more hazier than I could think of. And like, what's going on in our neighborhood? Like so much is different. and. I mean, that will, that's what led me to like Ironbound Community and ICC and to like asking those questions and wanting to know more and like like that research in me, like yeah. Googling and, and doing all that good stuff. I wanted to know more and so I found ICC and that's how I kind of got into the work. I wanted to be a programmer to like now I'm like a farmer and a community organizer so it's on its opposite sides in a sense but yeah, that's basically what I wanted to do. Where are we, like what section of Newark is this? Yeah, so this is the Ironbound section of Newark. We're actually at the community farm here. This space used to be an empty lot, and then over time, through community engagement, community wanted more green space, and so we were able to build this space up. 
and actually grow food here. Down the street we have one of the biggest garbage incinerators on the East Coast, which is Covanta. Then we have the airport, as we can hear the airplanes. So we're close to the airport, we're close to the Port of Newark, where maybe we have about three power plants, uh, fossil fuel power plants within the neighborhood. And this is all within a five mile radius. You know, we have schools, we have residents here in the neighborhood. And we have a lot of industries that contribute to like fossil fuels. We also have the Passaic Valley Sewage Facility, which is pretty much where all the sewage comes into from all parts of like New York, New Jersey, you know, it all comes down to this neighborhood. And so that's why we call it like the sacrifice zone, because we're like often sacrificed for like the greater good of like the country, right? Because yeah. everything is kind of like dumped here in our neighborhood. A lot of our folks are not aware of what's going on, you know, they don't know to stand up and fight for their rights, for our rights, right? For instance, the garbage incinerator. There was a proposal in the 80s where there were going to be garbage incinerators in a lot of places in New Jersey and those other places, they fought against them, right? And the places that got the garbage incinerator were the black and brown communities like Newark, like Camden, like, mm -hmm. you know, Rahway. And so it's like it was purposely pushed into our neighborhoods, right? Yeah. Because we live this, this experience, right? And because we are experiencing all the climate impacts that are happening in this neighborhood, like we are the lived experience, right? We mm. are the experts yeah. of what's going on. And so who better than to tell like city hall or politicians what solutions work for us, right? These are the solutions that work for us because we live in here, we know what's up. You know, oftentimes people are going to academia, but like, Academia helps, but like, how about my story? My story definitely is important and yeah. it's impactful. That so deeply resonates with me yeah. as a young black queer person. Yeah. What was it like being in spaces that weren't as welcoming or inclusive? What is like the difference that that makes being in a space where you can show up and be yourself? Actually just being like a queer Latina, I had to find and like, fight for spaces where I can be myself, right? I was questioned about how I was dressing, how I was speaking, like working here, like I realized that I didn't need all that. Like I left the corporate world to do this work so that folks, the young folks, and even the folks in the community can realize, oh, you know, Chris, you're doing it. You know, I can do this too. You know, I don't have to sound a certain way. I don't have to fit in a certain way, I can just be myself and then, you know, do the work that I'm doing. Coming into these spaces, like, community members are telling me, like, how am I gonna dress up to City Hall? I'm like, as you are, come as you please, and like, how you're dressing, don't worry about, you have to make an impression or you have to dress a certain way. You are the community member, you, this is how you live, you know, you don't have to show up in any different way. The organization itself has allowed me to be that, because that's one of those things that they actually amplify, like, be yourself. You know? Come as you are, you know, be human. You know, in your words, how is the work you do a climate solution? So here at the farm, we're like teaching folks about composting, right? Moving away from like fossil fuels, moving away from like overconsumption and just dreaming of alternatives to a disposable society. Like be an example of what regenerative economy means and what growing a vision of what we want to see in our community. So we do a lot of composting here, right? We do the urban farming and the gardening and bringing that power back to the community, right? You know, the urban farming, it helps with the vegetation and the, the heavy rainfall that we have or that we experience here in our neighborhood. Um, mm -hmm. Living in North, we don't have much green space, right? We don't have a lot of tree canopy. This space also helps with lessening the heat index, right? So. This space definitely helps um, kind of cool down the neighborhood just a little bit. And then Ironbound Community Corporation, um, and it's something, you know, we, we do a lot of advocacy work around like environmental justice, right? What does that look like? Just being the watchdogs of the community and informing our folks, hey, this is happening, and here are the solutions on how we can like combat this situation. What would you say are your superpowers when it comes to this work and when it comes to how you show up in the world. I feel like I'm that, like if I had like a, like if this superpower ever existed anywhere, like asking questions, trickling that information down to like the next group of folks, you know, whether it be, you know, elders, two generation, they just transferring that information down. Let these elders like guide you, right? Um, to where it feels good to you because you might 
and be like, okay, I got everything I need from you, and now, you know, taking that um, power into your own hands to create whatever it is that you want to create in your life. If you want to see change in anything that you do, like, don't be afraid to speak up, right? Be yourselves and, like, ask questions, right? Because you are the future, right? How can people support you and the work that you do? Oh, that's awesome. Follow us on Instagram, uh, down underscore bottom underscore farms underscore norm. Um, you can also follow us at ironboundcc.salsalabs.org. You want to donate, or if you're in town, like come down to Down Bottom Farms, like and volunteer with us, like. This space loves new energy. It's mm. like really appreciating y'all being here. I love that. Two questions really. One is, was there any representation or, or were there any role models for you? And then the flip side is, because you're able to show up, has anyone kind of acknowledged seeing you as that representation? Yeah, there definitely wasn't representation. like with me growing up in this neighborhood. Like I didn't see a lot of folks who look like me doing the work that I'm doing now. To like, I get a lot of kids now who are comfortable, right? They're like, oh, you know, I'm queer too, you know? You came from the projects too, like, you know? And so it's like, makes them feel a lot more comfortable to see like me from the hood, being queer and being an Afro-Latina to like, be in these spaces, you know, open the doors or like opportunities for different folks in the community, you know, the youth and the older folks as well. Representation is a symbol. We walk our walk, right? We talk our talk. And so that's something that I like, like to push out to people. Walk your walk, talk your talk, you know, be who you are. So yeah, it's, it's definitely important to have that representation. And My name is Christian Rodriguez, and I'm the community farm manager and organizer here at Ironbound Community Corporation. And I'm helping to reach Drawdown by spreading seeds of knowledge, empowering our community to speak for ourselves, moving away from fossil fuels, and fighting for our sovereignty.